Daniel Kuntz is the lead director of Chesapeake Gold Corporation. Dan, welcome to the Investor Intel studio via Skype. Thank you, Fred. Dan, you've been a senior officer of many different public companies and mineral exploration companies, and you've been on the, uh, the team that found the huge deposit at OU Tolgoy in Mongolia. Um, you're part of the bench strength of the Chesapeake management team and board. Um, what's your view of the current market uh, for producers needing to replace ounces? Well, uh, yeah, Fred, I've been involved in production side and exploration side, and the exploration business uh, is feeds the majors, and, and you, we know it's been no uh, surprise in the last five years, it's been quite difficult on the major mining companies, most of them. Uh, they've had to clean up their balance sheet, uh, sort of retreat a little bit, do some major write-offs and, and change personnel. Um, but we start to see now they're coming back. Uh, we're starting to see activity uh, livening up, but it's been a tough five years. Therefore, the exploration uh, pipeline might be less attractive than it was. And I think the, the uh, sort of 20 million ounce gold deposits are hard to find. Well, Matate's project, uh, the Chesapeake project in Mexico, is a huge gold, silver, and zinc project. And in 2013, there was a pre-feasibility study. Uh, another one updated things in 2016. Uh, what, what are you giving producers looking for a potential asset uh, in these studies? Well, Matate's, uh, the two studies demonstrate that it is a scalable project. So we can start out small and then allow your cash flows in the future over a five-year period to, to increase uh, production to an expansion level. Or you can start out large and move straight to, to the largest uh, possible production mine. And either one of those has its own um, rationale, attractiveness, et cetera. Lower capital is, is attractive in the smaller case higher IRRs and production and throughput is, is the attractive feature of the larger case. So what I think what we've done is demonstrated that it is scalable. The two studies also show that we've de-risked the project significantly uh, as we move forward. We've, we're using best, best practices, state-of-the-art uh, technical um, uses of, for environmental, uh, dry stack tails, for example, water that's been uh, traded for desalinization plant that we're uh, putting up near the, uh, the coast. And we also are using uh, essentially uh, infrastructure in Metates that is quite mature. There's a gas pipeline that Mexico just built and we're close to cities, labor. We have very good relationships with the, with the social communities there. Uh, th my understanding is that the water has been a huge issue for a number of other operators, a huge increase in cost in the last year alone in Mexico. It's very true, and uh, the, the the nation is starting to um, view it quite seriously. Of course, there's been there's been subject to drought, uh, subject to depletion of waters, uh, uh, let's call it groundwaters and and local waters. So, as such, it's a very important issue. The Matates will use water, but we've gone through quite a bit of engineering and study to recycle as much as possible, and also, as I said, to trade water that we will produce fresh water from the sea and, and then that will charge uh, systems closer to the, to the plant and then we'll trade those waters for water uh, up near the mine. Essentially you're fixing the cost of water for a future producer. Absolutely right, for the 30 plus year mine life. Uh, Dan, what's the, what's the exploration potential in the Matates area? Well, one of the big um, issues about Matate is that we have a, a large deposit but a higher capital um, front end associated with it. So you might say that capital intensity per ounce is pretty high. If any of the features you look at, that would be the one that, that's a, a challenge. And as such, we've looked uh, at satellite um, deposits that may exist near Matates. And we have a program. It's going very well. We're pretty excited about two of the nearby properties. So we're advancing those. We see some potential there that could be very, very um, beneficial to the, the long-term life of, of the Matates project by being able to feed some of the ore from a satellite pit into that existing uh, 
equipment and plant when it's built. A couple of the reports that I've seen on Chesapeake suggest that the ounces in the ground valuation uh, certainly uh, at the end of 2015 was substantially lower than some of the other public companies that have very large assets. Is that still the case? It is still the case. We have seen a, a, an attractive run up from a very low share price um, at, at the bottom of this terrible market we've been in over the last several years. Uh, we're now up several hundred percent, but this is nowhere near where we would be if we just did a simple comparison to a couple of our peers in North America here for undeveloped projects. We also have other features that are quite attractive. We have a very low strip ratio at this project. We have a, a non-Arctic environment for development when you compare us to some other properties up, up north. And so uh, when you start to look at these things, it's really the cash costs of production, the all-in cash costs that, that make a project bulletproof through the next cycle. And this project is quite attractive. So we think we have a long way to go on getting our valuation recognition for what we have here at, at Matates. Dan, thanks for the update. Uh, always good to chat with you. Same here. Thanks, Brad.